E-bikes are undeniably big business these days, especially with some of the European brands. One of the biggest brands that didn't have an e-bike up until relatively recently was Canyon though. So when they released the Spectral On early this year, we knew it was going to be very important and also potentially very interesting. Canyon have a reputation recently for bringing out some relatively unique models. So what made the Spectral On so interesting? Well, it was one of the few e-bikes and few mountain bikes in general to come with two different sized wheels. Up front there's a 29 inch wheel on all but the extra small and at the back there's a plus size wheel. And I think for e-bikes it's not a bad approach. So the reasoning behind this, or according to Canyon at least, is that the different wheels give different benefits for different bits of the riding experience. E-bikes obviously have a lot of power and if you want to go and ride up some pretty steep terrain, which you can do with an e-bike, you want to maximise the amount of grip from the rear wheel. And so a big chunky 2.8 inch plus tyre is probably the best way to go about that. On the flip side, descending with plus tyres kind of does sometimes split opinions, especially when you've got a reasonably heavy bike such as an e-bike. So having a 29 inch front wheel with a relatively chunky but still regular width tyre means that when you're descending, you've got a much more predictable feeling, more accurate bike, which I believe is actually better on more technical terrain too. While there are a number of brands going for smaller motor manufacturers, the two main ones are obviously Bosch and Shimano, and Canyon have gone with the Shimano M8000 motor for the Spectral On. Personally, I think that's a good shout. I prefer the feel of the motor when you're riding. It feels a little bit more natural, though arguably Bosch's new EMTB setting matches the Shimano in this capability a little bit. But I do prefer the controls of the Shimano motor and the display. So with the different size wheels, the traction from the back and the feeling of the big front wheel at the front and Shimano's motor, when I first saw the bike, I thought this is probably something that's going to be rather good to ride. I rode the Spectral on 8.0. This is an alloy model, which is available for £4,499. Now, Canyon at the moment aren't taking their e-bikes into the US market, but this may change into the future. The Spectral on comes with 150mm of rear wheel travel, and up front, there's a 160mm fork. Despite the travel figures, Canyon do say that this is a trail bike, not an enduro bike, and we'll get onto the geometry and talk about that as well. The added weight of an e-bike means that Canyon have been relatively smart with their specking choices across the range. So all the bikes, save for one of the women's models, comes with either 35 or 36 mil stanchion forks up front. So that's either a Fox 36 or a RockShox Pike slash Yari variant. And all the bikes come with 200 mil rotors front and rear for extra stopping power. A range of different drivetrains are available across the range, but the 8.0 I rode came with SRAM's 8-speed EX8 e-mountain bike specific group set. This comes with a 10 to 50 tooth range, but with larger gaps between the sprockets. SRAM say this is because with an e-bike you need slightly more durability, um, but also can get away with bigger gaps between the gears because you have that assistance from the motor. And generally the rim widths reflect the tyre widths going onto the bikes. There's dropper posts across the range, of course. And the other interesting feature in terms of spec is that Canyon have their own saddle for the e-bike. If you look at the pictures, you'll notice there is a little sort of shelf at the back of it. This is because Canyon say that with the ability to ride steeper terrain, your weight or your bum is more likely to slide back on the saddle. So this has a little catch effectively to stop you sliding too far back. Other neat features included in the design of the frame include a little skid plate underneath the BB to help the bike slide over things. The cable routing is designed to be as smooth as possible for as long as possible, so fewer kinks in there. And unlike a lot of brands, Canyon have gone for a semi-integrated battery as opposed to a fully integrated one. And that's because they say that it's easier to get access to the battery to remove it. In recent years on Canyon's latest mountain bikes, they've done a lot of work on the kinematic of the suspension. We've seen it on the Sender, the Torque, the Spectral and the Spectral On. They are looking at a suspension system which has all the classics, so a really supple start to the stroke, some nice mid-stroke support and then a good ramp towards the end when you deep into the travel. It's things that all manufacturers do aim for, but our experience of the latest Canyon Full bikes is that they tend to have pretty much nailed it. Geometry-wise, Canyon aren't always known for being the most progressive out there, and the Spectral On sits quite nicely in the middle of the regular range of bikes. So you've got a 465mm reach in a size large with 430mm stays, and there's a 66.8 degree head angle. Now there is a shuttle to change the geometry slightly, which makes it a little bit steeper, a slightly higher bottom bracket for climbing. But to be honest, I left it most of the time in the lower setting because there's a motor. 
So how does a Spectral on 8.0 actually ride? I came away very impressed with certain aspects of the bike. There are some which I think could be improved. The concept of having a 29 inch front wheel and a 650B plus rear wheel, if the bike is designed specifically for that, on an e-bike I think is a great idea. The amount of traction from the Maxxis Minion 2.8 inch tire at the back was incredible. We rode up some amazingly steep stuff in the south of France on wet, loose, rocky terrain. And you could feel the rear tire deforming underneath you, just creating all that mechanical grip. It was a really impressive feeling for going uphill. However, the 430mm stays have been put there to sort of keep the bike relatively agile. I think if you're looking purely at climbing performance, they could have gone a touch longer, which would mean a little bit more traction, a little bit more centered weight wise. So with a 29 inch front wheel and 160mm forks, the front end is still relatively high. So you do have to think about dropping your elbows to make sure the front wheel stays planted on the floor. There's so much grip on offer, I feel the geometry could aid it even further. That said, it is without doubt one of the most impressive climbing mountain bikes I've ever been on. When it comes to descending, the Spectralon is a little bit of a mixed bag for me. So Canyon say that it is a trail bike, and so we do have to kind of be fair to it in this regard. The just shy of 67 degree head angle and a reach of 465 mil in a large is fairly middle of the road for a trail bike. So I'm pretty happy with that. It is a nicely balanced feeling between the front end and the rear end length, those 430 mil stays. For me, one of the things I like about e-bikes is the fact that it's really easy to go ride big, steep terrain. The motor helps you get to the top of those longer, steeper climbs, and all that weight down by the BB from the motor and low down thanks to the battery means that there tends to be a lot of stability on offer. For that reason, personally, I'd like it if the bike was a touch longer and a touch slacker, almost moving into more of an enduro bike because the kind of riding I like to do on e-bikes, an enduro bike is arguably better suited. However, if you're a trail rider and if you aren't into riding the steepest things you can pretty much find, I think you'll find that the geometry of the Spectralon is pretty good and that is what Canyon have designed the bike to be, so I don't want to be too harsh on it for that. The saddle that Canyon spec on the Spectralon is one of their own designs and it's obviously quite unique with the little shelf at the back of the saddle. When I first saw it I did think, oh this is a bit of a gimmick, it looks a bit daft. And then I went and rode up some really steep trails and it was really good. I did worry that on descents, when I'm trying to get off the back of the saddle, the extra material around there would catch on my shorts. But in all honesty, I haven't found that to be an issue. It's also not particularly uncomfortable when you're pedaling along on the flat. You don't really notice that it's there. So it's an innovation that looks a bit quirky from Canyon, but I'm going to give it to them. It works pretty well. If you are looking for a more trail orientated e-bike, then I think the Spectralon is well worth a look. One thing I would be aware of though, if you are at the point of purchasing, is to have a look at the tires that have been specced on the bikes. I've got one of the cheapest Spectralons in at the moment on test, and the biggest downside of the bike is the tires I don't think are quite up to the task. A thin Schwab knobby nick on the back of an e-bike doesn't really cut the mustard in terms of puncture protection. So if you're going for one of the cheaper models, do have a look at the spec sheet and maybe budget in for a slightly beefier rear tire. So that's the Canyon Spectralon 8.0. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and don't forget to like or subscribe.